play right now. Okay, guys, um, we have Mr. O'Gorman of the Trentonian with us today. How are you doing, Mr. O'Gorman? I am very good, Joshua. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So um, today we're just going to cover, you know, uh, the impact of sports media on, you know, the Trent community and talk a little bit about Mr. Gorm O'Gorman's, you know, run and what he's been doing. You know, he's been at this for a long time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get it started. So my first question for you, Mr. O'Gorman, is how did you start getting involved in specifically the Trenton sports scene? Well, I've been in the Trenton sports scene for a long time. For a period of time, I was the uh, JV coach at McCarston Girls High School. Wow. And I, I coached girls basketball for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was uh, the coach, who was the head coach, moved on to a different high school, and I did not have a job at that time. Mm -hmm. Coaching job, okay? Yeah. So I got a call from the Trentonian, Joe Lode, who was the sports editor at that time, and he said to me, have you ever thought about writing? I said, no, but I, you know, I said, I'll give it a try. It'll keep me involved. And mm -hmm. you know, that's how I began my journalistic career, so we say. Wow. Um, do during this process of, um, you know, switching from coaching to, you know, working for the Trentonian, when did you realize that, you know, you really had like a passion for, you know, sports media in itself? Well, I, I think I've, I've, let, I've always had a passion <clears throat> for sports and local sports has always interested me. Mm -hmm. So it was the combination of two great worlds meeting, you know, getting a chance to write about sports and also at the same time being involved in what's going on locally. Okay. Um, why exactly do you have this love for local sports in comparison to a lot of these other you know, journalists who focus on national media or, you know, tri-state area? You know, when I first got to the Trentonian, there was a great writer there by the name of Jim Davis. Jim Davis covered high school basketball, Little League, and uh, field hockey. And Jim Davis, I remember him telling me, when Jim Davis would write a story, he always started the story about a kid who was, shall we say, the star of the game. Mm. That would always be in his lead. And when anybody ever would say, Jim, why, you always, why don't you lead with the team, something like that? And Jim said, and it stuck with me, who knows when that kid will ever get his name in the paper again? Uh -oh. So I, I think that and knowing that these kids are in high school are working hard, whether it's to get a scholarship in advance or just to play with their friends. So the more, shall we say, coverage and the more we can bring attention to what they are doing, that is really what I think our job is. Okay. Um, I know, especially speaking, you know, from uh... – my experience, you know, my experience of playing uh, high school basketball, you know, I've had my name in the paper one time, and I know I still have that newspaper off of my <laughs> Exactly. That, that's my yeah. point, Joshua. You got it. You know, that, yeah, that is, that's a very admirable you know, thing, honestly. Um, but have you always felt like, even when you were coaching, you were coaching for, you said McCarthy. Uh, McCarson. McCarson? Yeah. Even when you were coaching, did you ever know that you'd be involved in sports media, or was it more of a surprise? Surprise, total surprise. I had never thought that I would do that. Mm. You know, then again, I didn't think coaching was going to end either. But at the same token, you know, once it did, I was fortunate that Joe Lowe picked up the phone and called me and gave me that opportunity. Did you have any, like, uh, prior, like, writing experience when it comes to, uh, you know, writing articles and stuff like that before um, going to the Trentonian? A letter to my mother when I was in the service. That was about it. Wow. <laughs> And that was probably one or two. So, so it was where did you learn, you know, the writing skills and lingo of... Uh... Again, because when I went to the Trentonian, there was a lot of great writers and good friends there mm. who brought me along and helped me and showed me how to do things. It wasn't like you wrote a story and you sent it to an editor and he critiqued it. These mm. guys, you know, Jim Davis... Uh, Athen Atsalides, Dennis Mapazzoli, my cousin George O'Gorman, all of them kind of took me under their wing 
and showed me how to write things, how to set things up. And I'm forever grateful. So, you know, as they taught you all, you know, these writing skills, where would you say is the difference between, you know, your writing style and the way that you write articles in comparison to the way that you were taught? I, I think I am, I try very hard to follow the way I was taught. I, I think that there's several key components to a story. First of all, it's the lead. You want your lead to be able to grab the reader. You know what I'm saying? Something like yeah. that. Then there's kind of a little summary as to how everything went and who was the star or who did what. And then through the body of the story, you want to do, I'm not a big fan of play-by-play, -play, writing play-by-play -play because yeah. it's very boring. So you try to take the highlights and highlight them and get a quote related to them and continue to work that way until you get to your conclusion, which I always believe should tie into your lead. Mm -hmm. If your lead is Joshua scored 29 points and it was the most points he ever scored in his life, you want to end it by saying Joshua had the game of his life. You know what I mean? You, you mm -hmm. want to tie your story together. So what you're saying is you more want the hook to connect to like the, the conclusion. That you're right. You want, yes. You want the hook, then you just want to bring them along with what happened, the quotes, what people thought about it, and then conclude. Con I like to conclude it with a point about what I read about. Okay, so for most of like the hooks and the articles that, that you write, is it more of you'll write who had the big game or the big story, or is it more of like this team beat this team and this is why this team, you know, is – contending for like the championship or I even saw like the TC and J article where you talked about, you know, they're playing Christopher Newport uh, very soon right. and how like, you know, they just got a good win and how, you know, they're leading that on in Virginia. Is it more of um just picking out, like how do exactly do you pick out your, your hook? Okay. I, I will tell you quite honestly, I like to write around the quotes that I get from people. Mm -hmm. So if you get a quote, you look at that quote, and that gives you the point that you want to bring out. For example, we'll talk about that CNU, you know, Trenton State football, Trenton College of New Jersey football game. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that Coach Casey Goff said, if I remember correctly, was that, you know, this is a good team. They're, they've played well. They do good. So you want to bring out what they do good and expound on his quote with facts and with some innuendo of your own. Okay. Let your quotes also help you write the story. Okay, um, that's some wise words, especially when it comes to you know writing the contents of the paper. But moving on to a different subject, what has sports, in your opinion, done for the Trenton community in the Trenton area? Well, I I think Trenton, if you think about it, is extremely fortunate in today's day and age that we still have two newspapers. Mm. You have the Trentonian and you have the Trenton Times, which is nj.com technically. Yeah. But if you think about it, New York barely has three papers with you know the Daily News, the Post, and New York Times. Yeah. Philadelphia only has two papers. So for a city the size of Trenton to be able to have two newspapers every day I think it's pretty good, and it gives a lot of exposure to the athletes in the area. It gives a lot of exposure to the programs in the area, and I think at the same token, it also gives uh, the area the opportunity to celebrate and expound on what the high school athletes are doing. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we have to understand something that over time, Newspapers have changed. There was a time at both papers, the Trentonian and the Trenton Times, when we put a lot of rec stuff in the paper, recreation leagues and things like that. But today, staffing and things like, and the lack of staffing have certainly limited what's in, able to be done. Okay. Um, I, I, if I can, if you don't mind. 
Uh, Bob Noose, a good friend of Keith Klotz, Bob Noose used to work for the Princeton Packet. He mentioned to us one day, he's not there anymore. He mentioned to us one day that like six years ago, there were 23 full-time sports reporters in Mercer County. Today, there's six. Wow. That just shows you where we're at and, and how tough it is in today's day and age for papers to stay in business. Wow. Um, so expanding upon the topic of, I didn't realize that. So Trenton has two newspapers, Philadelphia has two newspapers, yeah. and New York has three newspapers. Do you yeah. know of any other towns in the area where they have a number of newspapers like that, like two or three? Not on a daily basis, I don't. Mm. You know, I mean, the, the way the, the major papers in the, the state are, you have NJ.com, which is in North Star Ledger. You have the Jersey Journal in Jersey City, which is a part of NJ.com. You have the Bergen Record up in uh, Hackensack. You have the North Jersey Herald that is in Patterson. You have the Bridgewater Courier News, which is tied in with the home news, in Bridgewater, Raritan area, and New Brunswick area. Then you have the Burlington County Times, which is now tied in with the Courier Post in South Jersey, the Camden area. And then you have the Atlantic City Press that is over in Atlantic City. And then I think you have the Gloucester County Times, and that might be it. That pretty much covers all the papers in the state. Mm -hmm. Other than there might be some weeklies around, you know. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Um. So my next question for you is like, can you name a time where you really saw like trans community rally behind a team, or you know, or just like a sports team, just in general, like you know, high school? Yeah, I I, I think there's been several of them. Uh, you know, certainly Trenton High's basketball team has had some great success, and. That would always bring, you know, uh, as you, I'm sure you know, they call the, the gym. It used to be Tornado Alley. They now have a, a, a new gym and everything like that. And it's a new high school. But you could go in there and it would be packed. You know, and you would just, the, the games that they would play and the following that they would get would be simply off the charts. Wow. Ewing High School had a lot, won a couple state championships. Mm. Those state championships, you know, by as they continue to go along, you know, that bandwagon gets pretty full. <laughs> mm -hmm. So once you're winning, everybody likes to jump on that bandwagon. I love Philly fans, but we'll leave that mm -hmm. alone. But so you then had St. Anthony's McCarston High School mm -hmm. uh, and Trenton Catholic Academy that has won yeah, at least one tournament of champions. And again, those things all draw all attention. And, and bring things out because they are the focus of the newspaper every day. You know, a preview before the game, a, a couple feature stories about the kids. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, we've been very fortunate here on the baseball side to have had two national champions in Babe Ruth League baseball. 1956, the Trenton Babe Ruth League won the national championship. They were led by a major league pitcher by the name of Al Downing, wow. who was a Trenton High student, ended up being drafted by the Yankees, played with the Yankees and the Dodgers. And then in 1962, the Trenton Babe Ruth League All-Stars once again won a national championship. So there's always been a little bit of good baseball following, too, at the rec level. That once again, I, you know, you got to get something going mm -hmm. to get the people to jump on board. But once they do, they do it pretty good. Okay. Okay. Um. Now, what is your favorite Trenton sports moment that you can can recall? Wow, that's a tough. One. I have to think about that. I, you know, I I think for me, it it probably would be to just you know have. I, I can't say I have one because nothing really sticks out. But I think it's just to be able to see and have had the opportunity to see some of the great high school athletes, whatever the sport might be, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, 
just to have the opportunity to see and to a little bit get to know some of these great athletes that, you know, sacrificed so much and mm -hmm. came through the area. Because there's been, you know, so many good things that have happened in this area that, you know, really would make it hard for me to say this is my favorite. Okay. Um, when you have seasons like this where it's like, um, you know, Trent, TC and J, we're not exactly going to make it to a championship or anything like that. There's nothing like, I don't really know field hockey wise, but there's nothing really that, you know, pops out of me right now. How exactly do you prioritize, you know, which sports you're going to cover on, you know, a certain day? Well, again, I think the first thing you do is that I'm always going to cover the football team. Because if you look at the, you know, the probably the priority in college, the football mm -hmm. team is number one. Okay, they're, they're the ones hopefully getting the most people in the stands and everything else. They draw the most attention, uh, whether it's Alabama or TCNJ. Yeah. So um, that plays into it. There will always be, I will always be doing a weekly story on TCNJ football. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to get to as many games because of some high school stuff. And I also do some uh, streaming with WBCB of high school games yeah. that on Saturdays. So that keeps me from the TCNJ games. But there will always be that. And then let, let's stick with TCNJ. Field hockey has always, always, every year they start the season, they are potential national champions. Mm. So that's always something you got to keep an eye on. Soccer, women's soccer has always been very good. They opened the year number one. They didn't finish at number one, but they opened the year as a number one team in Division Three. Mm. So that's one you keep an eye on. And then, you know, you also have to remember uh, Ryder has a very good field hockey program. They just won the NEC championship yesterday. Mm -hmm. Princeton University is another field hockey program. They're going to the NCAA. They won the Ivy League. Wow. So I think priority becomes which team is hot and which team deserves the most ink mm -hmm. at that particular week. Okay. How exactly would you say, though, that you prioritize, well, football gets a whole lot of people in the stands, right. but you know, they're not doing as well as a field hockey team. So right. how exactly would you say you... Well, I think, well, then what you would do is you very possibly might lower your coverage of the football team mm -hmm. to the point of maybe you're not doing a feature every week. Maybe you're just doing a, a, a preview game type story. And where you're going over and starting to follow the field hockey team, covering a little bit more games, doing a few more raps, uh, not raps, doing a few more feature stories on the field hockey players. I think the best way I can answer that question, your priority is go with which team is having the most success mm. and which team deserves the most ink. Mm. But... For example, like basketball season's coming up for TC and J. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we did get a couple more, of groups. Right? You know, we have a young team. You know, uh, we're a lot of people actually at the school are really looking forward to basketball season uh, coming up. How exactly do you juggle? You know, you have basketball. Basketball is upcoming. Is upcoming, and then you have maybe field hockey is ending, but you want to give a little bit more coverage to basketball. You know, right. it, it's on the up and coming. So, how exactly yeah, think, do you? Well, I think field hockey now pretty much might be over. Yeah. If they got an NCAA double bid, NCAA bid, that would be one thing to get a couple of stories on while they're on that one. But basketball, basically, for the most part, every year I cover the men's and women's basketball team pretty much the entire season. Uh, I, I don't travel no more with the team, but I do try to get the most of the home game. I'll try to get to the women tomorrow. And the women play hunt play hunter tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I'll try and get a preview done today to get it. If I can't get it in the paper, I'll get it online because our deadlines are now six thirty at night, so they're they're a little tough. Mm -hmm. But I try to cover the the basketball teams, both men and women, pretty much throughout the season. And as far as prioritizing them, you get to a point where they become your biggest priority. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, everything is dying down now from the fall sports, and it'll be mostly basketball. Okay. 
Yeah, and you're talking uh, about the men's uh, team being young. Mm. You're saying the men's team is young or the women's team? Yeah, no, the men's team. The men's team, it's uh, well, we were young last year, and you know, we have guys who are you know coming up who are sophomores, juniors. We have some freshmen. We have a new kid who just came in. He's pretty good. He's he's a little banged up now, but do you play, Josh? Uh, for TCNA basketball, no. Yeah, no. I uh, I I practice with a lot of the guys. You know, I don't really want to play basketball anymore, like full time. But you know, I, yeah, they got they got a couple kids coming back that I think are going to be able to help them. Yeah. Uh, Danny Bodine coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, kid from Cherokee, the shooter. Yeah, yeah, and Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, he's coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw where. Uh, Matt Goldsmith, they had P.J. Wingle. Yeah. Staff. Mm. P.J. was an excellent player when he was there. Uh, mm. So, you know, you know, I think Matt Goldsmith has done a very good job. A couple of years ago, if you remember, they won the championship. Yeah, no. I mean, and, uh, you know, some of those kids still have that hunger. Mm. You know, I, I think this will be the first year. And I hope, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not. But I think this will be the first year we can say we're let's let's leave those COVID years behind. Because mm-hmm. COVID had such an effect on sports. Yeah. You know, they were playing in that ten game schedule, you know, and then the next year, you know, people weren't really in shape. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this might be the first year that we're kind of out of that COVID nonsense and we can get back to being straight basketball. Yeah, no, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I'm, I have big hopes for them this season, but I mean, NJCU has a really tough team. That, that's what I say. Every single year. Well, I, I think the, the one thing I've learned over the years about the NJAC is learn to expect the unexpected <laughs> because it, it, every game is crazy. It gets wild. It, it it's like a it's like a western shootout. Yeah, they're just running and gunning. And no matter how and and I give Goldsmith credit because he realized he came in and maybe wanted to slow things down, but he realized that's not the style of being played the same. Mm. And you can't do that. So he's been up with it all, and I give him credit. They're always they're always right there. They're, yeah. they're always going to be. A playoff contender, number one, and number two, a title contender. Now, on the other side, the women, they are really young. Mm-hmm. They have some kids that are juniors that have been starting since freshmen. So they, they you know, th- this team has been weaned all the way up from freshman year. And mm-hmm. should be interesting to see what they have this year. Yeah, no, I know. I think as a, you know, a student body that um, is – Interested in sports, I think we have a lot of people who are excited for TCNJ basketball and, you know, what we could do. And uh, that's definitely going to be a fun season to watch, for sure. Now, can I ask you a question? Yeah, please. As a student, now I say, I go to these games. I go most mm-hmm. of their games. What do they have to do to get people in the gym? Win games, honestly. It just win games, and honestly, I, I just say just – advertise it more because like of course like the people like me or like people who like want to watch games or are looking to watch games obviously we'll go ahead and we'll watch games but if it's not like prioritized and it's not advertised like not many people are going to look at the schedule so i mean sometimes i go to games right mm-hmm. and i sit there i can count the crowd yeah do you agree with me on that a hundred percent a hundred so then i say to myself well why are we here mm-hmm. If there's no interest in the school, do you know what I'm saying? I I get very distressed when I see that because you put a good product on the. And again, let's go back to the year they won. People started showing up. Yeah. So you're right. You got to win. Yeah, my thing is just winning. I think I think if we start out the season going something like I'd say even like seven and three, just like the first ten games, maybe we win like six or seven of them, I think that'll really start to build up the buzz of the school because it was getting rough last year, especially in the game. Well, I, you know, I mean, they went through a stretch last year, if I remember correctly. It was very tough. Yeah. 
and you know they came back and bounced back at the end and hopefully you know i i you know again i agree with you they got to start the win to put people in the seats mm. i right. think they start next week right basketball yeah yeah no they start next week oh that's right they're playing rider their first game <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's an exhibition for for tcnj but it's a regular season game for rider oh really yeah, I believe oh, it's one so. of those. Yeah, yep. yeah. I don't I mean, know how that game's gonna turn out, but uh, it's a good experience. Yeah, no, very, very, very. Yeah, I'm looking at the roster now. They got a lot of seniors. Yeah, no, they do, but a lot of those guys have you know came up from whenever. Like Jimmy, he's, he's played since like his sophomore freshman year. Ants played since his sophomore freshman year. Yep. Danny's played sophomore freshman year. And they yeah. have a lot of guys who are like sophomores and juniors. They got Matt O'Corey. They have some guys who, you know, fell under the radar last season, but, you know, they gave us good minutes towards the end. So. Yeah, Nason Birch had a good year last yeah, year. Yeah, no, Nason. Yeah, and Clemente, I think, was the leading rebounder in the league, maybe. Yeah, no, he, he did his job, he, yeah. He does a great job there. Who else do I see down here? That's about it. But, you know, those guys are the – Laranga – Came along and had a very good year last year. Yeah, yeah, Jason, yeah, he did. I'm he sorry, did. I didn't mean to get you off track here. No, no, there's no problem. No, that's that's the exact type of content that I want. But to close this, I have you know two more questions. You know, just what advice would you give to someone like me who's you know trying to get into sports media? I would say don't ever lose sight of your dream, and get as much knowledge as you can. And get yourself to to introduce yourself to as many people as you possibly can mm. that are involved in sports media, whether it's at the Signal, whether it's at the Trentonian, whether it's at NJ.com, wherever it might be. Get yourself and put yourself out there and don't ever let your dream die. Wise words, wise words. Well, I mean... That's really all that we need for now. Um, that's all we need. Um, I'll probably ask you, you know, a few more questions after. But, you know, I appreciate the interview. Right. No problem. Glad to do it. If I get to a game, make sure you stop by and say hi. For sure. For sure. For sure. All right. All right. It's been great talking to you. It's been great talking to you, too. Thanks for your time. No problem.